Lighthouse, Lord God. We thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless the pastor tonight, Lord God. Lord, you see what each and every individual is dealing with, Lord God, in this building, Lord God. But Lord, we thank God that we can get our answers, Lord God. We can get what we need tonight, Lord God. Lord, help them not to lose one thought, dear Father. Lord, we thank you for being in Mount Zion tonight, dear God. We thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord, and we never want to cease to praise your name. Amen. Have you turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4? Two verses of scripture there. 12 and 13. We actually pray for us tonight. You begin reading verse 12 and 13. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Verse number 12, one more time. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Here, the apostle Peter lets us know that we will go through some things in our experience when a person decides to make the transfer from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light through Bible salvation. When they make the decision to let go and let God. When they make the decision to stop running from God and instead surrendering to him. When the person makes a decision to count the cost. We're talking about real Bible salvation here and not simply joining church. But a person makes a decision to actually count the cost. They understand Jesus, Son of God. They understand God is calling them through conviction. And they understand that the world has nothing to offer as it pertains to satisfying. They understand that although they're on the devil's team, they know the devil comes but to steal, kill, and destroy and when a person is obtaining this revelation of understanding they're now wrestling with and their mindset is how am I going to get out I see ain't nothing out here I'm not enjoying it I see the devil is trying to destroy me he wants me to go to hell he wants to destroy my life he wants me to be lost forever I know God has more for me I know God has a plan for my life I know I'm empty right now, and I know I'll only be filled through salvation. I need to take a drink from that well that shall never run dry. I know what grandma told me about, what mama told me about is the truth. I know every lie I've ever been told by the devil is a lie. And I know everything I've ever been told about the streets, amen, is a lie. And I want to be saved now. I want to start living. I want to make that move for God. And saints pray, there's many amen out there that desire to make the transfer. Amen. God is moving. In fact, we gotta, as soon as we got a service, one of the saints children ready to get saved right now. We just got to preach right now so we can't do it. Amen. We pray God delay is coming. My God. Amen. But God is moving. Amen. 
God is moving, amen, thank the Lord. There are more that are seeking that transfer. They want to get off that train, headed to hell. They want to get that train, get off that train, my God, filled with drug addiction, that train filled with depression, amen. That train, my God, filled, amen, with hatred and bitterness and strife. And they want to get that transfer to that train, my God, filled with hope and love and joy and peace and freedom, amen. Glory be to God. Anybody here tonight, my God, you can get your transfer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's still room, amen, on the train. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can get your transfer tonight. You can come to God in prayer saying, Lord, amen, I want to be saved. Lord, I want to let go and let God. I'm tired of living the life I've been living, and I want to live the life God has for me to live. But you got to count the cost. You got to count the cost. We don't uh, 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 force anybody. Into Bible salvation. You can't do it. We may encourage you. The Bible did say, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We may persuade you a little bit, but we can't force you because you got to count the cost. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve two. It don't work. It don't work. You can try it all you want. It does not work. You can't come halfway. You can't come halfway to God. It don't work. You got to come and people say, man, well, I tried it. No, no, no. You tried to come halfway. You, got, you, you tried to keep God and keep some other stuff. But when you truly let go of everything, it works. It works. People can talk about this went out with the apostles. This went out with the apostles. No, it didn't go out with the apostles. Salvation still works, amen, when you count the cost and simply let go. And I'll tell you the truth. And we preach about counting the cost and all that other stuff, and it's important. But I'll tell you this. When you get a divine revelation, it makes the cost a lot easier to count. I mean, sometimes we preach counting the cost like you got all this to give up. You really ain't got that, but I got it. You gonna get saved? I got count the cost. Don't do this raggedy boyfriend. What about these habits I got? What about these headaches? Eh, count the cost, yeah. What about this depression I got? Yeah, count the cost. What about this bondage and this and these spirits and demons that I got? Eh, count the cost. Because the devil try to have you think you got all this and all this and all this and all that. Truth be told, you really ain't got that much to give up. You getting a whole lot. And matter of fact, the stuff you giving up wasn't good for you anyway. The stuff you gave up wasn't like it was good for you. It was the stuff that was causing your headaches. It was the stuff that was causing, amen, your miserable life. Amen. amen. God don't ask you to give up nothing unless it's not good for you. You ain't got to give up, amen. Uh, 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 I was about to say ice cream, but I don't know. Maybe you, if you ain't too healthy, you might have to. But you, go with me for a moment. I was trying to make the analogy. You know what I'm saying? When you get saved, you like butter because I, you ain't got to give up ice cream, you know, so to speak. You ain't got to give up lemonade. You don't, you got to give up the stuff that's not good for you. It ain't like God trying to take all the good out of life. No, 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 no. The things that's not good for you, sin. Amen, amen, that's what brother. you got to give up. Amen. So here, he said, once you do make that transfer, and you make that move to get saved, we got to be real. Yeah. We preach the Bible here. That's why we ask you to follow with us in Scripture. We're not saying that you're going to get saved and it's going to be a flowery bed of ease, that everything's gonna go your way, that every situation and everything you've ever desired is gonna come your way and you're not gonna ever go through nothing. It's gonna be utopia, <gasps> salvation, it's one. You're following in Jesus' steps. <laughs> Study Jesus' life. He went through some stuff. You're going to go through some stuff. Amen. But thank God we're going to go through, but we got grace. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We got God with us as we go through. So the things that we go through are trials, persecutions, attacks from the enemy. And there are levels to them. Some of the things that and the trials that we go through are what we call normal trials. You may be going to a store and somebody riding slow in front of you. You know, 
You may say, I come to service to give my testimony tonight, and you weren't as quick as you should have been. And the devotional leader cut it off. And now the devil is trying to come against you and make you feel a certain way about the devotional leader. And for those that testified before you, because they testify all the time, and you didn't get a chance. To, the devil put it all in it. Have you not accepting folk and looking at people a different way and this, that, and the other? Want to go talk to them, slip them a note, to get on the pastor? Why don't you tell them? Oh, it's just a duh. So you got to deal with all these things in your head. That, 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 that's just normal. That, that don't even register. That, that's, just, phew, that's just, that's a little. But some things you're going to go through. It's going to be another level. And here, we're going to look in scripture, but Apostle Peter, he said, fiery, extremely intense, fiery. Fire means to engulf. These are things that are meant to engulf you, to overwhelm you. These are things that are meant to destroy you. The fire, fire consumes some things that come your way. The intent of that was to absolutely consume you, take you up out of here. These aren't normal trials, but these are fiery situations. In it, wherever the enemy endeavors to work, God will do two things. One, he'll give us uh, an understanding of what we'll deal with. And then two, he'll give us to know how to deal with it. Follow where we're going tonight. So if you're going to face something, God is faithful. He'll let you know the things that you'll face. But he's beyond that, and that would be a good God to let you know what you're going to face before some things that have come your way. It's in his word. However, he doesn't stop there. He also lets us know how to deal with it. So here, he's first letting us know we're going to have to deal with it. He's giving us a heads up. Some fiery trials are going to come your way. Don't let the devil overwhelm you and think that you did something wrong. These things come. The, 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 these things uh, 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 come our way. All right? But then he gives us an understanding of how to deal with them. That's our burden tonight. There's going to be some fiery situations. And there's some saints tonight that are dealing with some fiery situations. And the faithfulness of God, he went like above and beyond on this insight. Because he knew these situations are meant to take us out. So he went above and beyond to provide us insight on how to deal with the fiery things. How to deal with the fiery situations that come our way that are meant to consume us. To burn us up. To take us up out of here. How do we deal with the fiery situations that come against my mind? How do we deal with the trying to consume me and just destroy me? How do we deal with the fiery situations that's coming against my body that's trying to consume my faith and just destroy me? How do we deal with those fiery situations that are never to come against our home, our marriages, our children? Tonight, we're going to look in God's word, amen, and look at how the insight that God left us to deal with the fiery situations. We'll title it tonight, God's Fire Repellent. Y'all got to pray for me. God's fire repellent. Fire is those intense, engulfing, consuming, tax, trials, persecution, situations. Repellent means able to repel a particular thing, impervious to a particular substance. When a fireman is going into a home, amen, they tell you, get up out of there. But then you see them going in there, amen. You ain't got on what they got on. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> amen. They have on material 
that is made and tested that is able to repel fire and the flames. Repel means to drive or force back away. We are not promised that we will not go through fiery situations, but we are given insight in God's word that we can have a divine repellent. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 6 and let's look at it. Ephesians 6. I want to read verse 10. Finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to, st to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having the breastplate of life righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all saints. My Lord, here the apostle Paul in his letter to the church of God at Ephesus, he writes a powerful letter and he breaks down many things in regards to being quickened, translated into the kingdom of life. I mean, he, did, oh, he worked with so many different things about uh, uh, being uh, saved and the power of that. Then he dealt with unity among the brethren and how to accumulate or how to come to unity within the faith. And then he really dropped a mic on this sixth chapter where he talked about how to equip yourself to deal with battle. And in this, he provides insight on several different things. He talks about, first of all, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, our warfare is not carnal. But we're dealing with spiritual wickedness. We're dealing with spirits, how the enemy would work. And so the armor is spiritual. So he says, put on this armor. He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye, should, shall, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking. Now, the first three things he said, they're there. Having, you got that. Your loins is girded by with truth. And your feet is, he said, but now you got to do something. Amen. 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 You, you got some things, but some things you got to take. Amen. Oh, Father. When you're in the battle, amen, you got some things, but some things, amen, you got to deal with, you got to do, amen. So he said, above all, and then he goes and says, above all, of utmost importance, taking the shield of faith. Amen. Then he tells you what, to, what it will do. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, repel, all of the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, you have to understand a historical context of what the Apostle Paul was working with in this text. He goes and says, this is of utmost importance. Taking. Take it. You got the strength. Take it. The shield of faith. Now, the shield was utilized in battle 
to deal with combat. Sword, arrows come, and here he says, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. The shield of faith in the Greek, the word there comes from the word the first part of the Greek word of the Greek phrase would be better translated by which, which is by which ye shall be able, by which for the words ye shall be able, the Greek word used here is called dunamis, which denotes explosive power. It's a, it's a dynamic power. And is where we get the word dynamite. The Greek word and phrase here uh, actually to be translated above all taking the shield of faith by which ye will be dynamically empowered. Okay? So here this, this, this when you take this shield of faith and they would hold it up and out as they went forward. Once you hold it up and you have it out in the proper way, you are dynamically empowered in battle. It's almost as if he's saying here, a supernatural power will come over you, amen, when you're in a fiery trial, if you are able to pick up, amen, the shield of faith and utilize it in its proper fashion as you go forward. All right, y'all got to work with me tonight. Now, the darts aren't technically translated as darts as much as it is arrows. The, the bow would be where they would hold it back and the arrows would come from far to come in. And you need your shield unless those darts and those arrows would penetrate and be able to come, all right? Sometimes they would use some form of arrow, I mean darts, but many times it was really in this context of arrow that would be coming, all right? Now, when they would come, amen, what they would do, and the reason why it says here, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench, read verse 16 for us. Above all, taking the shield of faith, uh -huh. wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. He says, if you do this, every one of them that comes will be quenched. Now, bellows, long slender arrows, my God, that would come. Quench means subimnunu. Quench by dousing or to extinguish by drowning in water. <sighs> Pray for us. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The arrows they would put of material on the top, like a skin or a fabric on the top, and they would fill it with combustible, uh, a flammable, and what they would do is they would either light it and they would go and it would cause a traumatic effect. Or, Lord help me to be able to preach it all tonight, they would wrap it in a lighter form and they would push those. They wouldn't light them, no. They would go and upon contact, they would explode. 
The first one, you saw it coming, very intimidating, and it was coming at you. The second one, it looked less intimidating, was, but just as or more dangerous. The first one, some of the flame and some of its combustion is now going through the air. The other one, it looks innocent. But when it hits, it explodes, causing blindness and going into. So here he's talking about the fiery. He's not talking about regular darts or regular arrows. He's talking about every now and then they would actually get these special arrows. They would get these special, not all the time, but every now and then that's called the fiery ones. They knew what he was talking about back then, but because we got nuclear bombs and stuff, we don't really understand this on the same level as they did. This was a fearful thing to face the fiery arrows. So here he says, but if you take the shield of faith and as, as they would prepare it, they would be able to quench. Now, the shield of faith, the shields that they would bring, uh, read verse 17 for me one more time, but Frank. And take the helmet of salvation. Uh -huh. And the sword of the spirit, uh -huh. which is the word of God. Come on. Praying always. Okay. All... Read that verse one more time for us. And take the helmet of salvation uh -huh. and the sword of the spirit, uh -huh. which is the word of God. Okay. Now the Greek word quench, you should be able to quench, come from benenum, benenumi, which means to quench by dousing or extinguishing by drowning in water. It refers to the water-soaked shield of the Roman soldiers. You see, before Roman soldiers went out to battle, they purposely soaked their shields, purposely uh, soaked their shields in water until they were completely water-saturated. The soldiers did this because they knew the enemy from time to time would shoot not just arrows, but arrows, fire bearing arrows in their direction. If the shield was dry, it was possible for it to set a flame and catch a man and, and, and douse the soldier in flames. But when this vital part of armor was water soaked, the flame would be extinguished upon contact and the arrow, a man would not penetrate the heavily saturated surface. So therefore the shield then was made out of hardened wood with skins wrapped around. If you see some of the old ones with skins wrapped around it as they go there and they would reinforce with metal some time later. So here they had these hardened wooden with uh, uh, animal skins or we would call leather stretched in, 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 in on them. If they were dried when they went to battle and regular arrows came, it would divert it. But if the fiery darts as the apostle Paul is speaking of here were utilized this dry skin and wood it would penetrate hit douse it in flame also engulfing the soldier but when they would soak it and saturate it before they went to battle then when they went to battle it would the saturation of it would serve as a repellent for the fiery arrows that would be coming their way. So the arrows would not hit a dry shield, but a saturated shield. You see, when you're in a dry battle, amen, the dry shield would actually work. But if you're in a fiery battle, go with me now, if you're in a fiery battle and they got, they're using fiery, that's another level. You have to take the time to saturate, amen, your shield, saturate, amen, your shield, taking the shield of faith, saturating it, amen, with water, my God, the Bible says, washing uh, of regeneration by the word of God, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, the water, amen, was part, uh, 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 symbolizing water, amen, so faith, saturated 
in the word of God is saturated. I'm not just taking my faith, but I'm saturated in God's word. Amen. Faith washing by water so they would wash the saturated. I'm building my faith. I'm saturating it. Amen. With the word of God, the promises of God. Amen. All that God has given me, build up my faith for how he took through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How we, I'm set. I'm in a battle right now. I got to saturate my faith. Amen. In God's word. He opened up the Red Sea. He can open up for me. I got to saturate my faith on the ravens who brought my God and met every need. Elijah. When you're in a fiery trial, don't just take faith. Saturate your faith first. Saturate it in the word of God. Not only would they take these shields that were saturated with the word, but over in Job, he speaks about there is hope for a tree if it be cut down. That it will sprout again. Amen. That the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth. And the stock thereof die in the ground. Yet. So. I'm about to quote it. So the saturating of the shield. Being able to repel the fire. The word of God, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, our, when our faith is saturated in God's word. And the second element of water representing inspiration says there's hope for a tree. My God. If it be cut down mm. with trees, cut down in battle, backslidden condition. It says there's hope for a tree. If it be cut down at the scent of water, inspiration, yeah. divine inspiration. Yeah. They walk into a service, my God, and there's divine inspiration there. Yeah. Amen. If there's inspiration, let them know, amen, God is the God of second chances. Yeah. Let them know, my God, he told Joah, go, he told David, go and recover all. Amen. Let my divine inspiration, my God, let me, uh, 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 it said that uh, if a tree be cut down at the sin of water, it said, Job later on said, there's a spirit in man, but the inspiration of the oh, almighty my. giveth <coughs> understanding. So divine inspiration, when your faith is saturated in the word of God, and inspiration coming to service, praise the Lord. Amen. Hearing the testimonies, amen. Inspiration, praise the Lord. You see, the reason why it's got to be saturated in that word to deal with the fiery stuff, amen. The reason why it got to be saturated with inspiration when you're dealing with that fiery stuff. Why? The Bible says over in 2 Timothy, for all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You see, when you're in a fiery trial, amen, you can't just have faith, but you gotta have that faith that's saturated in the word and inspiration to help you deal with the fiery situation you're in. You say, Brother Lee, make it even plainer. It said all scripture is given by inspiration. You see, when your faith is saturated in the word of God, saturated, amen. When your shield is saturated in the word of God, saturated in divine inspiration, you see all scripture is given by inspiration, what? The scripture was written up under divine inspiration. When you're in a fiery trial, you got to get before God and get the inspiration that that scripture was written up under to pull into your situation. Just like it took inspiration to write it, it takes inspiration to implement it. It's not just a head now. You can read what you want to read, but if you don't go far enough, the inspiration is there. The same inspiration that God gave them when they wrote it is still there. If you get that same inspiration, you can activate that which was written. Receive it. Receive it. Amen. Receive it. When you're in the fiery trials, he, Paul knew what he was talking about. They knew what he was talking about because there's been so much time. Sometimes we don't understand it. 
at the same level. He said they would go out. And before they went to war, they would go in and grab their swords, their shields, saturate them. Let them soak. Lord, I'm in a fiery trial. Lord, we're about to go to battle. I got to saturate my shield. So when these fiery darts, when these fiery arrows, when these fiery situations are come my way, it don't face no dry shield. Amen. Somebody needs to saturate their shield tonight. Amen. Amen. Amen, my God. Saturate that shield, my God. Get in the word of God, my God. Inspiration comes by praying. Sometimes you're in a fiery situation. You're in the word of God asking God to give you more of the word. Amen. Then you spend time in prayer. You're building up that inspiration for your situation. Amen. Your shield is just getting just drippy. Some folk go to amen, go to, to battle. They swords just, their shield's just drippy. Amen. When those, shield, when those arrows come, they just doubt as soon as they come. They're quenched. They're quenched as soon as they come and they don't penetrate. My God. All right. Let's look at it actually in action. Go to Daniel. Pray for me tonight, saints. Pray for me tonight, my God. We're going we to look at this in action. Amen. Amen. This ain't new. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tried and tested. And it works. All right. Go to Daniel chapter number three. The shield is faith. Hebrews 11, 1. Thank God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Amen. That seal being saturated in water, washing, regeneration by the word, the word. Faith cometh by hearing the word. Saturating my shield in the word of God with divine inspiration. Amen. There's inspiration. Hope of a tree. So here we see it in action. Come on and read. Daniel 3, verse 20. He commanded the most, high, the most mighty men that were in his army to you bind. See, you see, that's why, amen, we don't want to miss a service. We, I'm getting inspiration. I need the word, and that's why we got to have the word in every service. We don't want to just hear something. We want to hear the word. I, the word, give me some word. I want the word, the word, the word. But I got to get my faith built up. I got to get my shield saturated. My shield, my God, may be a little dry. I got to get, don't miss devotion, my God. It may not, you may not receive something the moment you get up that morning and you read, amen, that parable. Or you read that story about the Elijah and the, and the woman who, who didn't have nothing. But, but she goes and Elijah, she had just a little bit left for her and her son. And Elijah comes. The old prophet says, I want you to make me a meal. She said, I ain't got nothing but, but for me and my son. Then we're going to die. Elijah said, make me a meal. And how she step out on faith. Make her lad, the last she got, she give it to the man of God. And my God, what God did in return. Sometimes when you're in a situation that seems that you don't have much left. Amen. And just step out on faith and God can take your little oh you working with you you may not get all of that when you read it but what you're doing at that moment is taking your shield and you immersing it in the word in the water you may not get nothing right there sometimes you will get it it jump off the page Woo, you feel it many times that's because you're in a battle or you you're dealing with something God give you a fresh inspiration because you dug but sometimes you may not even get nothing directly from that study, from that devotion at that moment. But best be known, you saturated your shield that morning. <laughs> so now when you're going out into the world, amen, you're dealing with some fiery situations. You're wondering why they're not engulfing you. They're not sticking. They're just being doused. Amen. Fiery accusations. Fire, you ain't saved, you ain't this, uh, fire, you ain't this. You, it, 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 it's not inflaming your body. It's not inflamed. Why? Because you spend time keep getting prayer. You got to keep inspiration alive. You, if you're going to have faith to deal with fiery situations, you got to keep inspiration alive. You got to stay up under inspiration. You can't toy with inspiration. Inspiration is key. If you ain't careful, you just got to shield. But with no inspiration, you may be able to handle some things, but let some fiery stuff come. You're going to need that faith to be saturated with divine inspiration that God is able. Right now, he's able. Right now, in this moment, he's able. 
I will not fear what man can do unto me. I, God is able. God's going to bring me through. It, it is coming to pass. I don't care how dark it looks. It is coming to pass. I believe it and it is coming. God is not a liar. He's not a man that he can lie. It will happen. Divine inspiration will cause you to go up to Nebuchadnezzar and talk to him. King Darius and talk to him. It doesn't matter what. That's divine inspiration. Amen. Let's look at it in scripture, but Frank. Come on, read. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army. Come on. To bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now you all know the story about how they made this big statue, God, idol, and they told everybody in the kingdom, you're going to bow. Well, everybody bowed but a few people. And everybody is bowing down but a few. Read the word, bro. <laughs> to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Come on. And to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Come on. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats. This is important. Read. And their other garments. Come on. And were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. See, you can read the Bible. The Bible, you think it's just extra words. You're like, why did you get up? It connects. <laughs> read with Frank. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent why is and the important? furnace. Why was it important to tell what they had on when they went to the... Like they going to a, they going to a wedding or something. Oh, she had on this, she had on this. <laughs> they detailing what they had on going to the furnace. Oh, Lord. Come on. <laughs> come on. And the <laughs> furnace exceeding hot. Yes. The flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. My Lord. Now, you know, that's some that's a hot situation. Hey, man, it burned up the folk that tried to take him there. You better be careful messing with the saints. You must want to get burnt up. <laughs> You must want to get burnt up try, trying to throw the saints in some fiery furnaces. My God, you get burnt up. My God, come on, but Frank. And these three men. And these three men. That's a sermon right there. And these three men. Come on. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes, sir. Fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Uh-huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Come on. And rose up in haste. Yeah. And spake and said unto his counselors. Did not we cast three men bound? Hold on, what they do as soon as they went to the fiery furnace? Fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Say that again. Fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Y'all gotta, gotta understand this. Let me give it to you in, as far as the picture. Okay, these three men went in there and they fell down. It wasn't like the fire had uh, a tackling power. These three men, they, they spiritual. And this is what saints today do Amen. when they get in the midst. Thank you, Brother Bill. Thank you, Brother Bill. Work with me, man. When, when they get in the midst of a fire, they fall down Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. They fall on their knees, my God. Amen. That's what you can do even in the midst of a fiery situation. You want to come about it? Fall down. Fall down. My God, on your knees, get before God. They got before God. Come on, read, brother Frank. Fell down bound. Yes. In the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Come on, too many people are standing up in the furnace. My I'm Lord. preaching, my God. Help amen, us. Amen, amen, amen. My God, get yourself down, Mike. Come on and read, brother. Then Nebuchadnezzar, yes. the king, was astonished. Uh -huh. Rose up in haste. Yes. And spake and said Come on. unto his counselor. Come on. Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? What in the world is going on down there? Read. They answered and said unto, unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hold on, hold on. You said, Brother Lee, now that that's a shift that took place. You're right. You can be loosed and walking around if you fall down. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Did y'all get that? They, were, they fell down bound. But when you fall down bound, amen, you get a hold of God, a fourth shows up. My God, amen, and you'll be able to be loosed. Amen. Not, they didn't get out the fire yet. But when they fall down in the midst of it and God sent the fourth man, they're loose. Although you see me still in the fire, I, 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 I'm loose though. I'm not waiting on God to bring me up out of it. 
I'm not bound by my situation. I'm still in the middle of it, but I'm loosed in it. Why? Because I got on my knees and I got before God and I said, Lord, I need you now, not tomorrow. I need you now. This thing is trying to consume me. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke unbelief. I rebuke doubt. I rebuke these flames. God. Amen. Jesus shows up on the scene. My Lord. Amen. And when Jesus shows up, now you can get up. Amen. When Jesus shows up, amen, they got up. My was God. was loose having church down there in the midst of the fire with the fourth man. Come on, read, Brother Frank. We're going somewhere. Amen. Come on, brother. Therefore, yes. because the king's commandment was urgent uh -huh. and the furnace was seating hot, uh -huh. the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Verse Meshach, and Abednego. He answered and said, Lo, yes. I see four men loose Come on. walking in the midst of the fire. Come on. And they have no hurt. Come on. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. But Bill, don't push me, Brother Bill. Don't push me too quick. Amen. Amen. You're catching all the little nuggets. I, come on, Brother Frank. Keep going. Then Nebuchadnezzar yes. came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. Come on. And spake and said, Shadrach, yes. Meshach, uh -huh. and Abednego, ye uh -huh. servants of the Most High God, uh -huh. come forth uh -huh. and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Uh -huh. And the princes, governors, and the captains, and the king's counselor, being gathered together, Come on. saw these men, Come on. upon whose bodies the fire had no power, my, my. nor was a hair of their head sin. Oh, my Lord. Come on, but Frank. Neither were their coats chained. Let the word preach. Read. Nor the smell of fire had passed on Come them. Come on. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said. Hold on one moment. I'm just going to give you all this and we're going to pray. God's fire repellent. Here. They're in the middle of the fire. And mind you, they had on like thick panty, like hosiery, <laughs> like, like cloth. All Anybody that knows about fire knows that if you have anything fabric like that, either it's going to catch quickly or it's going to have a stench. It's going to smell like smoke. But something happened. It said, stop it, John. It said, here, the fire had no power. The fiery furnace they were in, it couldn't burn them, singe them, diminish them. And when they came out of it, they didn't smell like smoke because they didn't smell like smoke when they was in it. Amen. My Lord, my Lord. Some people, and they want, they say, I'm coming out this, smell, I, I'm coming out this, and I ain't going to smell like smoke. You ain't going to smell like smoke if you didn't smell like smoke in it. That's right. That's right. Lord, help us tonight. Help us tonight. Amen. What? When you got that repelling on, when you got that repel, you say, Brother Lee, what? He, okay, I, I would go all the way back to Exodus on you. They had saturated their shield of faith in the word of God. Over in Exodus about 13, 20, uh, uh, 3, whatever verse it was, 13, 1, it said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. They took faith in God's word. I'm a stand and I'm not going to bow to this image, which was a God type, small g. So they were immersed. And even though they were away from Jerusalem, Jerusalem was down in them. The word, they wouldn't shift from it. Then they were immersed with inspiration. Go back to verse 17 real quick, but Frank, just, just tie this in. Verse 17. We if it pray. be so. Yes, sir. Our God. Come on. Whom we serve uh -huh. is able to deliver verse us. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. Yes. And said to the king, uh -huh. O Nebuchadnezzar, 
We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Come on. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. All right. And he will deliver us. Hold on one second. Okay, now let's tie it together. They had faith, but their faith was immersed in the water of the word. I will have no other God before me. Then over in Isaiah, they understood the words, no weapon formed against me shall... I understand what fiery furnace you're trying to put me in, but I'm not just saying that I'm not going to do it because it's wrong. I'm immersed. My faith is immersed in the word. It's not, I'm not just not doing something. I'm following God's word. You see, when we stand, it's not that we are just not doing something or not doing this because no we we are standing on God's word so here he was standing on God's word I'm not going I'm not bowing because it ain't because I want to be cool I'm not not bowing because I want to stand out I'm not bowing because I'm immersed in your word and not only do I understand that word, but I'm immersed in your other word that said, no weapon, long as I'm standing, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. I'm immersed in the words you gave Joshua. Every place that the stone of your feet shall, I'm immersed that you will be there for us. I just don't got faith, but it's immersed in your word. The promises of God, My God and inspiration. Here he said, if it be not, O king, the king gave him a second chance. Only divine inspiration is going to have you look at the king of Babylon and say, I don't need your second chance. They hadn't bowed. They hadn't played the, the music again. Oh, you got to get this. He said, if I play the music, you don't bow, you're going. They played the music, they didn't bow. They should have went. But the king came back and said, hey, I'm going to give you all a second chance. Whenever you're given a second chance by a king like that, you take it. Unless you are under some inspiration. I appreciate what you said. But king... Don't waste your time. You're going to play it again. And the same thing is going to happen. But I want you to know, not only are we not going to bow, not, that's inspiration now, but our God, whom we serve, is able, well able, to deliver us. And he will deliver us from the fiery furnace that you set. Now you're up under real Bible inspiration, divine inspiration, when you can declare what God will do, but then you go a little bit further and you tell the devil, but if not, I want you to know, amen, if God don't come through like I want him to, I still am not going to bow to you. These brothers' swords were drippy. They were wet. They were saturated. They were filled, my God. So when the fire came, it was repelled. My God. It couldn't stand. It couldn't light their flame. It couldn't burn them. It couldn't take them down. They didn't even smell like it. Amen. Revival broke out. Amen. The king came and said, oh, my Lord. When they called him through, gave him a sniff test. Hold on. Hold on. Y'all don't even, y'all didn't burn? Y'all don't even smell like smoke. Who is the God that y'all serve? Set an edict. Anybody that does not worship the church of God, God, amen, let them be put to death. Why? Because they had God's divine fire repellent. When we go through those fiery situations, some situations are going to be normal. Some are going to be fiery. Lord, help us to get our shields up. And Lord, help us to saturate our shields in the word of God. Saturate our shields in divine inspiration. Hold them up high, amen, and every single fiery arrow will be put out. My God, Lord, amen, God. amen, every one of them. Amen. 
Well, thank the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, Amen. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, the wicked one, Satan himself. Shall we stand? Be encouraged, saints. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. The shield still works. Still works. Hold on, what page is this? Let's get some songbooks. Hold on, what page is this? Page 174. I'm back, Brooke Kennerly now. Get a songbook, get a songbook. If you got one near you, get a songbook. 174. Hold on, hold on. In the on, hour on. of sore temptation, I may be. Yet amid, yet amid the trials, Jesus', Jesus face, I see. I see. In His word, my anchor. Hold us to the last. To the last. While the fiery darts. While the fiery darts are flying thick and fast. We shall not be wounded. We shall not be wounded. In the hottest fight. fight. If we if raise we the, shield, the shield of faith in Jesus' might. Through the grace, grace of, of God, God will conquer to, to the last. last. While the While fiery darts are flying thick and fast. In the greatest fast. suffering man may undergo. In the greatest suffering man may undergo. He shall have the victory. He shall have the victory if he counts his soul. Conquering the conflict. In the conflict. To soon be passed. To soon be passed. Though the fiery darts. Though the fiery darts are flying thick and we fast. We shall not. We shall not be wounded in the hottest fight. If we raise. If we raise the shield. Should I walk in trouble, pressed on Should every I side? Should I walk in trouble, pressed on every he side? He who knows my weakness, knows my weakness will, will with me abide. abide. I will I ever will trust him in the hottest in blast. The hottest blast. While, the fiery, While the fiery dots are flying thick and fast. We shall not be. We shall not Thank be the Lord, wounded saints, be in the hottest blast. Thank the Lord. If we wear the shield of faith in Jesus' might. To the last, while the while fiery, fiery darts are flying thick, listen to this fast. in the heated furnace, in the heated furnace, while the let me stay, precious gold refining, 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 precious Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, dear God. We thank you for your word, dear God. It's a light and it's a lamp. We thank you, dear God, for divine insight. We thank you for divine inspiration, dear God. 
Father dear God, when we go through, dear God, the fiery trials, when we go through the fiery attacks from the devil, Father, trying to take our faith, Father, trying to take our children, trying to take our health, trying to take our spouses, trying to take our grandchildren, trying to take our freedoms, Father, we rebuke the devil tonight. Father, we have a fresh touch of inspiration. Father, our faith is renewed tonight. Lord God, our shields are wet tonight. Father, immersed in your word, in the promises, yea and amen. Father, immersed with divine inspiration. We pray you bless the saints tonight, dear God. Father, those that are going through some fiery situations. Father, we pray you give them strength. Renew their faith tonight, dear God. Father, we pray, dear God, you bring us clean through to the other side. Father, we don't want to smell like smoke when we come up out of it. Lord God, we can't smell like smoke when we're in the middle of it. We rebuke unbelief. We rebuke woe is me. We rebuke doubt. We rebuke it ain't going to get no better. It is going to get better. The Bible said, though the enemy, my God, uh, 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 though, though darkness come through a night, yet joy comes in the morning, dear God. Father, we believe God Lord God we thank you for your goodness Lord this too shall pass Father bless somebody right now Father to God weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning Father encourage some saint that is in the midst of a fiery situation tonight Father renew their faith Father immerse it in the word sometimes when we're in a trial we just don't want to fold we don't want to bend we want to stand that's important but we got to immerse it in the word we're standing on god's word we're not just standing against this or standing against that we're not just standing against medication we're standing on the fact that he said i am the lord god that healeth thee we're not standing my god just against my god this that or the other but we're standing there god that he said i am the alpha and omega the beginning and the in. He is all that we need. We don't need man. We don't need to run to the arm of flesh. Father, we can stand on God's word and you're all that we need. You told Moses, my God, tell them children that I am sent you. Lord, we're thankful tonight that I am is still here. We immerse in our shield in the I am. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and faithfulness. Thank you for divine inspiration, dear God. Love you, Lord, from the depths of our heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.